So Jeff, uh, name, rank, and serial number? Jeff Johnson, uh, former employee at Xerox Office Systems Division, which later was called Information Systems Division. Um, I was not one of the original developers of the Xerox Star. I came on after the Star existed in 1983 yeah. or so. The market. But the, the, what we were doing at the time was uh, developing, uh, rewriting the Star software from scratch so that it would actually be modular and have separate applications. And that it wouldn't be this one giant application. It was one giant program when yeah. it was originally written. Yeah. Um, and so what happened was, while I was working at Xerox, my friends who were in Silicon Valley kept yeah, there's saying... The famous, there's the famous star screen with the, the Xerox monk. who I've actually... Um, his widow um, contacted me at one point. We, we put the commercial, the monk commercial for the night, like the marathon copier, uh -huh. is on the site. Oh, I see. Yeah, and the actual the guy who worked the advertising issue that made those monk commercials, I met him. Oh, I see. So it's like kind of a complete picture here. <laughs> <laughs> well... Um, he was a vaudevillian actor. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. He was, yeah. Uh, well, so what happened was I was working at Xerox on the the follow-on to the Star, which was called um, Daybreak, right? Uh, 6085. No, well, that was that was the machine. The machine yeah. was called Daybreak, but this the the oh the operating system. The, uh, the, the uh, software was called Viewpoint. Viewpoint, which they neglected to trademark and had to change to Global View later. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know that. I knew it was changed to Global View, but I didn't know why. Uh, that was after I had left. But in any case, what happened was, uh, so we were writing uh, Viewpoint as, a, as a, an, a separate window system and then a bunch of applications. But we were still trying to hide the application from users. We didn't mm -hmm. want users to have to start up a word processor and then load programs into it. We just wanted them to open documents and open spreadsheets and open things like that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I'm working on this thing as a user interface programmer and, and, and designer. And um, people are saying, what's it like to program in, in Smalltalk? Uh, what, what's it like to write code for the Alto? And I'm, well, we're not writing in Smalltalk. We're writing in Mesa. Mm -hmm. um, and it isn't the Alto. It's, it's uh, the, the, the Dandelion machine. Right. And, and, you know, and so I kept explaining things like that. And finally, I said, you know, I'm just going to write an article and explain all of this. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, and explain sort of where the idea of Star came from. And by that time, um, there you Bill are. Your was still there. Uh, Bill, Teresa Roberts was still. Bill came to our Maze War event. Oh, okay. We did. <laughs> Dave Smith. Dave Smith was gone. Charles Irby was gone. Marnie Beard was still there. And Kevin Mackey was still there. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but Dave Smith and Charles Irby were sort of the main designers of the original star. And they were both gone. In fact, Norm Cox, who did the icon work, yes. he sent all of his drawings and things that's on the site. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, in any case, um, uh, so what I did was I went back and contacted these people and I said, will you help me write an article? And, I, they, and they all said, no, we don't have time. Right. So, I, so basically I did the research, wrote the article, and then had them send it out to all of them and had them check it. But I didn't feel like as a latecomer to the process that I could publish an article called the Xerox Star Register.